Hey, Chloe. What can I do for you? When are you going to stop talking to me like that? I am terribly sorry. I apologize if anything I've said was insulting or inappropriate. <laughs> Would you please inform me what you found inadequate? It's the opposite. You're way too polite. Hmm. Hey, Chloe. I want you to call me Coco. Why would you like that? Just call me Coco. I cannot do that. Why not? You were born into an important family. I couldn't possibly address you in that manner. Is that what you want? Yes. Why would you say something so sad? I am your bodyguard. Nothing more. No matter how friendly you are with me, that fact remains. Yes. Chloe, the bodyguard. I don't look at you like that anymore. Do you mean to oh. say that I am not worthy of being your bodyguard? No. <laughs> that's not what I mean. Then why? Can't you tell by looking at me? <laughs> no. I do not presume to know what you are thinking. Fine. It looks like I need to spell it out because you're so dense. Oh, get her. It means you've become my friend, Chloe. What? Don't make me repeat myself. You're my best friend now. Because this is the only person. <laughs> okay. That's why I want my friend Chloe to call me Coco. Considering our difference in status, I don't believe that's appropriate. Liar. Oh. You're hiding how you really feel. I told you before, I might not be able to see, but I'm sensitive to feelings. It makes me very sad when people hide things from me. That makes sense now why Julie ordered Chloe to kind of stay with Coco because of the kind of emotions and how she wanted her to kind of the design of the old this go. I did not mean to hurt you, Miss Coco. However, I became confused. I feel like I have become less myself ever since I met you. As a doll created only to fight, was it permissible for me to have such feelings? I'm starting to forget who I was before. That is what I'm scared of. You finally decided to be honest with yourself, Chloe. You're not a doll. You're you. You have feelings. You used to be Chloe, the bodyguard. Now you're Chloe, my friend. Chloe, I'm happy I met you. Friends don't need to talk to each other in such stuffy old ways either. Words express the distance between hearts. Jesus. <laughs> so when you talk to me that way, it makes me sad because it feels like you're creating a wall between us. Do you not want to become closer to me? That is not the case at all. Then call me Coco. That... that's... Come on. Mmm... <laughs> miss Coco. Don't call me Miss. Try again. Coco. Yay! You were terribly cute when shy, but... I need you to get used to calling me that. No more being polite with me, okay? You have to promise me, okay? My friend Chloe? Jesus. <laughs> so please, kill me. Wait, 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 wait. That's turn around. Shoot me through the heart with this gun. No. No! I can't do it. How could I? Why are you asking me to do this? Why are you making me do this? If this is how it has to end, then... Uh, oh. Noah oh, called out the shit. worst meteor there is. A wolf in sheep's clothing. Uh, here we go. What Julie will say to us now? Julie called it the greatest meteora. The possibility to change human and meteora history. What should I call it then? That Meteora who looks like Coco, the one who ate her. <gasps> it's interesting.
Whoa, crazy. It's way more impressive seeing it from the surface. Not the fucking environment. For some reason the design, like the level designs are strictly focused kinda on the main either characters or what's like know what's happening but like the environment in the background is the shittiest that I've seen like I mean it, it was the same case with Tokyo Kronos that's the developer's choice to make it yeah I bet it's it kind of weird I know if it stood up. it's not gonna start rampaging around right it looks like Coco but it's still a meteora like, the background is important as well in games <laughs> then we should kill it now oh Yamato I don't want to have to fight something like that though Gross. Professor Julie seems to think that it won't start moving right away because it sustained heavy damage from Chloe's last attack. It's probably regenerating itself by sleeping that way. Regenerating? Hey, that's gonna be bad news when it heals up. That's why we have until then to settle this. Professor Julie is already on her way to collect samples. She's fearless as always. How should we collect samples from her? Should we cut her up or something? Are yeah. you okay, Chloe? <gasps> well, it depends. <laughs> What's that sweet smell? Is that flower not a texture? <sighs> Dahlias, okay. I can't believe it. So many plants growing on the surface. Hey, doesn't this look like it? Yes. It's the flower Coco had in the sunroom. I think they're called... Dahlias. Dahlias. It was Coco's favorite flower. Ugh, what a mean specimen! All the samples I collect just disappear into dust! I have such an enticing specimen! And I can't even take a pinch of skin back with me! Oh, okay. Like that. Oh, I'm gonna die of stress! Oh! We have a flower. <laughs> Unexpectedly found a way to kill the professor. I guess she can die. <laughs> oh no. Nothing's gonna kill her. It seems you're having difficulty with sample collection. Is it hard to retrieve even a fragment of the outer shell that covered the humanoid? Forget it. That disappears the moment you break off a piece. The only thing we could take were these red flowers growing all around its feet. I'm not a fan of that sweet smell. Ugh. But it's weird. Dahlias don't typically give off. Even the Dahlia's cocoa oh, shit, didn't have this strong of an aroma. Right, Chloe? Uh, I, I yes. wouldn't know. I don't think any plant activity was detected there before the humanoid meteora appeared. Do you think it's because of the humanoid meteora? No idea. What's your theory, Alba? You think that humanoid meteora is nourishing the plants? Then how did the flowers manage to blossom overnight? Are you saying that meteora can speed up time around it? Hmm? That would be interesting. No, I can't presume to know. <laughs> I'm not trying to attack you. I'm oh. complimenting you, Alba. It's good to have questions. Sure, Julie. You have some shady context. Suspicion, agitation, and fear, dissatisfaction, anxiety, <laughs> and bad omens. Face the unsettling feelings inside you. <gasps> That's science. There's a lot to do because we can't carry the sample. Maybe move the lab to it then. Aw, uh, come on. I don't even want to be near it. Just so you know, Yamato, you can't say no. This is a giant we're dealing with. We may even need to get the Machia moving. I guess if that's my fate. But what I'm wondering is why that thing looks like Coco. She you ate her. The same way, right, Chloe? Oh shit, Libra time. Um, I think I have to start kind of not look at the Libra and to kind of think about myself. I would choose ignore purely because of the independence kind of stat, but I would. Myself, I would agree. That, that's weird. So, what is the reason it's imitating Coco's appearance? It's kind of mixed. I won't forgive it if it's insulting her on top of eating her. It should be killed immediately. Honestly, 
Hey, Professor Julie, can't we just call it a meteora? No, we can't say that for sure. That's why we need to study it. Why? How can something that huge be anything other than a meteora? Only idiots talk in absolutes. Yes, uh. it could be the meteora that ate Coco is just imitating that form. But we can't rule out the possibility that Coco's still in there somewhere. There's a possibility. That's why it looks so much like her. Or it could be like Schrodinger's cat. Oh, God. She's both alive and dead. Meow. What? Why would there be a cat inside? The oh, my God. I'm with idiots. <laughs> Coco alive inside that thing. Don't even joke about that. You surprise me, Chloe. Science is born from hypotheses that sound like jokes. She might be kind of like a humanoid machia. Like Coco would be inside of that woman in the show. Just think. As long as it looks like Coco, it's at least using some elements of her. It's like some attack on the Titan shit. <laughs> <sighs> We're just talking about possibilities here. However, you guys should know that normal meteoras don't eat people. Nobody knows where Coco went after she was eaten. What if mm. Coco has been alive for two years inside the meteora and has fused with it? Yeah, that actually is a good concept. That would be a great discovery. Changing the relationship between humanity and meteora. We might need to figure out a way to communicate with that meteora eventually. How are we supposed to talk with a meteora? But if Coco is inside it, then there's a possibility it would understand language. No way that's possible. Coco inside that thing? She could be. Maybe she took that form to tell you something. I mean, you were the closest to her while she was alive. If she wanted to say something so badly, that she turned into a meteora to do it. I wonder if because we discovered that we killed Coco, like Chloe, but does everybody know? What was the situation about it? Then that message would most likely be for you. Do you still think we should point a gun at Coco's uh -oh. admirable efforts? That's a reference. Do you really think she should be killed? Wait. That's that's mixed as well. Share hesitation means no, and I agree. Okay, so uh, no, 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 no. That can't be Coco. She's lived oh, inside the meteora's stomach for two years. Wait. I don't oh, even want to consider. See, that. the answer was not clear. But the reason that meteora looks like Coco, that is something we should find out. Alba, you vote for keeping it alive too? Did you forget that thing is sitting right near our home? Of course, I'm fully aware of how dangerous the Meteora is, but I know Chloe is confused too, right? Another Libra. See, this mix as well. Refuse what? Refuse killing it. Postpone this. I think refuse is refuse killing. I'm not confused. No, you are confused. It's so obvious. Well, I am confused, but the answers now. Is that Coco? Or a meteora that's a bit like Coco. Or it could be Coco who's a bit like a meteora. Or a Coco-ish. Meteoric Coco. <laughs> Your head is twisting and turning. But it's okay to think about this. Good job, Chloe. Wait, you wanted to kill me with Noah like seconds ago. So I'll be studying that thing inside and out. You're not to get in my way. Actually, you're going to help! Oh shit. <laughs> well. I can't get what Julie said out of my head. Is that a meteora that looks like Coco? Or Coco with a meteora's body? Yeah, that's interesting. Sitting in my room won't bring me any answers. Going to the surface has been prohibited since then. Oh. Information control, I'm guessing. Hey, Data. The Council is split on how to handle the humanoid Meteora until an official decision is made. 
I'd like to prohibit any contact with the humanoid Meteora. Oh shit. Also, as with normal Meteora, the humanoid falls under S-rank classified information. Naturally, you're not to share this with anyone outside of the Organa. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> right. That includes me? I'm allowed to contact it, right? <laughs> yeah, I realize Julie is not gonna be happy. <laughs> no, you are being put on standby. Are you stupid? Whether Coco is inside that thing or not, a meteora imitating a human form is a valuable specimen. Totally, we would study and investigate that thing inside and out. We can't deploy our people to study it unless we can determine its safety. How could you miss this opportunity? Aren't the top brass interested in the meteora? Please understand their fears when that thing could become active at any moment. <laughs> Trying to understand how idiots think is going to make me an idiot! Yes, that's good philosophy. <laughs> in any case, you are to be on standby until the council makes their decision. You're all also prohibited from entering and exiting the surface. Hmm. Seems like Corona all over. <laughs> is it right for me to just be on standby? Oh, that's interesting. I really am curious about the stats in the right. So I'm just gonna start answering as I think, and uh, of course go to service. I can't Are you kidding just me? stand around. I want to see for myself if, by some off chance, that is Coco. No being late. I hate having to wait. I can't just stand here and do nothing. Hmm. Where are you headed so late in the night, Lieutenant? Shit. <laughs> General Dieter! You're not planning on going to the surface, are you? Oh, three choices now. Uh, what is equivocate? I'm gonna be honest, just like I am. I'm sorry. I can't say I'm not disappointed. Do you know how serious disobeying an order is? You're prepared to face the consequences? Do you want to see the humanoid meteora so badly that you would disobey orders to do so? I just can't help but be curious. I understand how you feel, but I can't pardon your actions. I'll pretend I didn't see you here. Go home. Mm -hmm. God damn it. Did you not hear me? Um. No. I'm gonna persuade her. But you must be curious as well. If that meteora originates from Coco, it could respond to me as I spent much of my time with her before her death. Hmm. So you believe the humanoid meteora would respond to you? That's, in that's interesting what relationship Coco had with everything else. Because apparently she was born into like a royal family. And uh, yeah. It's only speculation. Hmm. That Meteora even fascinated a designed human. Interesting. Of course you're on your way to see the Meteora that sits on the surface. As well? Yes. Professor Julie is quite upset with the Council's <laughs> orders to stay away. Clearly. She's in the middle of arguing with the top brass as we speak. The Professor's proven herself quite fearless standing up to the Council. In any case, this humanoid. A Meteora closes to our appearance. What are Meteoras exactly? Right. Mm. I've had a similar conversation with Coco Coconoe about this before. There were Meteoras before when Coco were alive? <gasps> with Coco? I was acquainted with the Coconoes, so I've known her since she was a child. Okay, Coconoes. <laughs> Given all the knowledge she grew up around, she was erudite beyond her years. She had an interesting perspective on the Meteora. She once referred to their thorn wave as a song. She thought the meteoras might be singing to us. Singing? Just like Noah is singing? If she's right, it's quite ironic. The meteoras sing to us whenever they see us. Perhaps it's a song to try to understand us. However, their song destroyed the surface and laid waste <laughs> right. to fertile ground. Humanity went underground and came to fear and hate them. They continue to sing at us whenever they see us without even knowing. A warped song like crying with a sense of longing. Hmm. 
No, my position dictates that I must punish you for disobeying your orders. But the council's decision must be followed. You should think of being part of an organization. I will probably be reprimanded for Professor Julie's outburst. They'll probably tell me it's my job to keep that mad scientist under control. It's so annoying. It makes you want to act out in some little way. So it seems like Dita is a human as well. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I know. Let's just say I never saw you today. Are you sure? What's there to be sure of if we never ran into each other? <laughs> Do as you please. Personally speaking, I would like to know more about that beautifully sad creature. Professor Julie isn't the only one fascinated by the meteoras. I wonder if I would uh, choose a decision to stay in the room, there would be a different course of action. Because I know this game will have multiple playthroughs. So if there are any discoveries, I hope they are reported to me immediately. Interesting. According to General Dieter, Julie tried various ways of approaching the humanoid meteora in the brief window she had. She stimulated it with high voltage shocks to assess the damage it took and its reactions. <laughs> That's not a proper way to do it. And use ultrasound to study the state of its organs. Every approach was fraught with difficulty. None bore fruit. Something is turning inside, like this black thing is moving. Like next to her right arm, but I don't know what is it exactly now. What? Coco didn't open up easily. Picturing Julie's resentful face fills me with a bit of pleasure. What are you? Are you Coco? As much as I hate it, the Meteora's appearance overlaps with my memories of Coco. Her soft hair, as fine as silk. Her smooth, porcelain skin. Her long eyelashes. Even her thin lips okay. are the same. She trembles slightly as she breathes. Coco. Coco. Why did you come here? Is there something you wanted to tell me? If you're really Coco, is the reason why you're here because you resent me? I couldn't be with you until the end. I wasn't able to understand you. Coco, we weren't able to understand each other. I have so much I want to ask you. Why did you drop me as your guard? Why did you leave me in the room? Drop as a guard? So something happened before her death then. Why did you go up to the surface back then? Surface? You always sang to the sky, so quietly and gently, as if to comfort someone, even right before being eaten by the meteora. If you call the meteora's cries songs, were you... <laughs> singing with them. <laughs> singing to the meteoras and not the sky? Maybe that's why the meteora came and eat her. Shit. As if you were trying to communicate with the meteoras through song. Coco, why were you able to smile in front of the meteora that opened its mouth? That's like fascinating. Could it be because... I'm sorry. You never intended on dying? Huh. Uh oh. <gasps> Shit. Coco, did you really come back just to see me? Huh. 